March of the Machine Aftermath is the worst Magic the Gathering product of 2023. It is the perfect emblem of how far down the road of greed and insanity Wizards of the Coast has gone. And it's probably just going to get crazier from here based on what they've been saying about their plans for standard magic. I am a wizard! History. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends! I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for a historic edition of Mega Magic News. We're here to talk about the absolute tire fire that is March of the Machine Aftermath and how that ties in to Wizards of the Coast's upcoming planned changes for Standard and the overall direction that Magic is going. So clearly, Aftermath has been rejected pretty much across the board. When it comes to this set, there are very few specific singles that people are looking for, which is leading to a very undesirable situation. First of all, you never want to have a magic set where there aren't that many cards that people want, but it becomes far worse when you have a crazy product where you say, hey, why don't we go down to having like six cards in the pack? Why don't we sell people way less product for the same price? Why don't we just take what are essentially a bunch of leftover cards? Because when it comes to Aftermath, here's what I fully believe happened. Wizards of the Coast, when they design a set, they will design a whole bunch of cards. They don't go, we have a 300 card set, design exactly 300 cards. You end up with a bunch of different designs, extra ideas, concepts that don't work, mechanics that get discarded, or just too many cards of a particular mechanic or a concept, whatever it is, something like that. You just end up with extra nonsense kicking around that's not quite good enough for the main set. Well, somebody in the marketing department went, wait, 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 why don't we take some of this extra art we have kicking around and some of these extra card concepts that we've already had somebody design and just sell them anyways. Like, so they went ahead with it and they've changed the pack up in a way where it actually feels like the olden days of magic. If you were, bad, if you were around at the beginning and you know like Arabian Nights, antiquities those sets came in weird numbers in the packs right so you get like eight cards a pack but the price was cheaper than a regular booster so it was like that but also the rarities you had commons and uncommons there were no rares back then there were different layers of uncommons but it was basically just commons and uncommons and when you remove the commons from boosters like they've done with aftermath go okay we're taking out all the commons and now all the packs are like one to three rares and then at least three uncommons and you just go so there's no rares in this set it's all just commons and uncommons that's what you're doing here and then you look at it and you go so there's 50 cards in this set and they're like well when you consider all the variants you actually have about 300 different cards to it's like this is a 300 card set that's also a 50 card set and there's only a few cards that people want. Like when it comes to designing magic sets, Wizards of the Coast makes a bunch of commons and uncommons for draft. That's how packs are balanced. It's all for draft and they use that as an excuse on multiple levels. It's why all the commons in magic suck now because they won't get everything too crazy for draft and also because we don't want you to have easy access to good cards and the uncommons, well, there's a couple, we can have a couple good uncommons, but not too many because it'll mess up draft and then it's like, well, we can't put these kind of rares and whatever into the set because of draft and when we made like modern masters and we made the second one, we went, well, let's optimize it for draft, which really means inserting a bunch of jank. So Wizards has been able to hide behind this draft excuse forever, right? But with this set, March of the Machine Aftermath, you can't draft it. So there's no argument for there being any garbage in the set. There's no point for there to be garbage in the set except for to be a hose you card. So I want to take a look at a particular card from the set as an uncommon they've included and I want you to really think about when you're looking at this demon if this feels like a power level that even deserves to be printed in a set that's not for draft. This card specifically has to be good enough for limited play. This demon is awful. This screams to me that they had this sitting around, it was a throwaway card, and then they're like, nope, we're gonna put it into this aftermath concept. The whole idea 
behind the aftermath, the way it was sold to us, even from a flavor perspective, first of all, they went, man, we've got a massive, epic, life-changing, huge thing happening in the multiverse. You're not even gonna believe what's happening. And then you find out, what is it? It's like, well, you know, planeswalkers and now they can travel to different planes and stuff. They've lost that ability. A whole bunch of planeswalkers have lost that ability to planeswalk. But guess what? Everybody can go everywhere now. So it actually doesn't matter. In fact, they have it on the box here. When you read the box, it says, oh, what was it right here? It goes, many surviving heroes have lost their powers, though the, um, though the paths between worlds are now open to all. It literally just goes, they lost their powers, but it doesn't matter because the whole point is the idea is, hey, we want to sell more legend cards for people to play commander. So they literally knee jerked changed the story. That's why you can see the differences. Elspeth wasn't supposed to go the way that she went with the storyline. All of it wasn't supposed to go that way. Why do you think Karn just shows up at the, at the very end of the story, materializes himself a brand new body out of nowhere and walks up and is like, sorry, I have to destroy you, Norn. And you're like, this is so misplaced and confusing. Why didn't he materialize a body in the past? It's because the original storyline they had, they threw it aside because they wanted to change the marketing and go, well, we're leaning way more into Commander. We're going to ditch most of the Planeswalkers. We'll still have Planeswalkers, but we're leaning heavy into legendary characters and we want to be able to put any legendaries anywhere so we can do this gatewatch nonsense with legendary characters and take them from plane to plane to plane to plane to plane and never have them develop character and never do anything of worth or merit so it's just all of it is is marketing aftermath is a tiny little dlc set that was it's an afterthought right it's been called afterthought after birth it's a tiny little bit of a set that has been sliced off and sold to us. Either it was part of the original set and chewed off, or it was just extra stuff and sold to us. The story itself, the amount of people are like, I can't wait to hear what's going on in Aftermath. And they're like, oh no, didn't you know the two story installments that they put out for Aftermath was the entire story. That's all you get. So the first half of the entire multiverse resolution, the first half of the story for this whole box set here is that Chandra and Nyssa are having a relationship conversation. That's one half of the story. And then the other half of the story is Nahiri somehow turned her metal arms not into metal arms and pulled all the metal out of her body. And then Ajani showed up and went, Arr! and then they did a lore stream on it where they literally asked the lady who wrote the lore, hey, what's going on with the Johnny? And she couldn't answer. Like, what's going on with this set is absolutely insane. They totally just wrote the full story for March of the Machines. It was 12 installments. And then they just went, uh, you know what? Take the last two parts and we'll turn that into the aftermath story. This whole set is just to see if they can rip us off by selling us way less cards at the same price. And so they are getting what they deserve as this product is being roundly rejected. I saw so many posts, and I've never seen this before, where people going, yo man, my LGS isn't gonna open up a box of this. And yeah, neither is mine. My, my LGS isn't opening this up. My LGS isn't opening this up. People going, yo, of the 10 LGS is in my city, only two are opening this up and they're only opening up one box. Like, and you can open one box and get everything in the set. Like, okay, I have this box here of it. This comes from the LGS that I go to. Every time a new set comes out, he gives me a booster box to open. I take the cards back to him for the store. I stopped by the store yesterday because I didn't even think we were going to bother with this stuff. I'm like, well, he's not going to bother opening it, right? So when I came into the shop, we talked for a while. I didn't even ask about the cards. He puts the box in my hand and I go, do you want me to open this? Like, that was my response. I've never said that before in my life. Like, I was amazed. You want me to open this garbage product? Okay, we'll do it. So I'm going to do a live stream opening this up over on my other channel. And I'm going to talk about this the way that I can't talk about it on this channel because I do not use that language in the videos here. But for real, I'm going to tear into this garbage nonsense so hard. This is an insane scam where this is like, you know, we already make crazy money, but our customers are idiots and they don't deserve our respect. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go ahead and dump more crap into standard. And then they're looking around and they're panicking now. They're panicking and they go, okay, look, man, we're releasing this extra aftermath set and it's garbage. And like all these commander decks that we've been shoving with every standard set, they're not selling. Take a look at the festival in a box. Otherwise known as clear out our trash. They have a commander clear out bundle and it's all commander decks from sets like Streets and New Capenna, the garbage that nobody wanted. And Wizards is like, 
Will you buy them, buy them off us in like a six for one deal? So they have these products that are loading up. You've got stuff like the commander decks building up. You have a situation where the collector boosters are yielding diminishing returns for wizards as they have to keep coming up with more special concepts, but they feel less and less special. The halo foils really feel that special. They look cool with the squiggly squooglies, but do they really genuinely feel special compared to everything? It's all blandified and the market has been slumping. So Wizards is trying to boost this all up. So then we have this announcement recently where they came out and said, hey guys, remember when I asked what was wrong with Standard? Well, we've listened to your feedback. You told us that the format is completely unbalanced and unplayable and that the game is too expensive and that the card quality is bad and we've heard your complaints and to rectify all of that we're adding another year to standard and it's like you want to run that by me again chief and it's like yeah well we know you have a lot of complaints but internally the only complaint we have is we're not making enough money off of standard so we're already trying to force rotations into every format on earth and for some reason standard is languishing i don't know why this huge money sink the most expensive format to play where your whole deck is intentionally obsolete standard used to work because wizards lavished crazy amounts of attention on it it was their baby they thought it was the most important thing and then they stopped feeding the baby and they're like my baby no move now why baby skeleton right like look, we got to get meat on baby bones it's not going to work though like standard is hosed unless they go back to what they were doing it's not coming back and guess what friends they do not have a plan they are scrambling around they agreed to an interview where they were asked questions where they gave a whole bunch of non-answers to the point where when you read it you go why on earth would you agree to this and do this? Because all this screams is you have no answers for anything. When it came to asking about, oh, you're staying out for three years, what kind of plans do you have? Well, we don't have any concrete plans yet, but you'll know they'll be really good when we have them kind of responses. And you're just like, why? Why would you say this? And then there's questions like, hey, one of the biggest problems for Standard has always been the land base. And that's true, right? Magic chokes things out at the rare point with the land base because they know how important it is. It's by design. Why do you think all the best rares are always in the rare? Uh, why do you think all the best lands are always in the rare slot? It's to get you to spend the most money. And they've started to creep to even put better lands up in the mythic slots in some cases with Cavern of Souls and stuff, right? So you've got a situation where they know the mana base is like that. They know it's what keeps it like more expensive. So that's brought up as a very reasonable question question and it's totally just shut down as we have absolutely no plans no plans to change how the mana base and how we do any of that and that was the only concrete answer every other answer was we don't have any specifics but trust it it's going to be great when you see our plans they're going to be amazing we definitely didn't just knee-jerk react and like say this out of like a Oh, we need to expend the life, extend the lifespan of our products. But that's exactly what it is. When asked about like, okay, so it feels like if this format is this much longer, you're going to need a more aggressive banning strategy. Well, we haven't really decided what the banning strategy fully should be. And it's basically saying we're still going to waffle very, very much and just do that to sell the boxes and stuff. We don't care. We're just giving, it's going to be business as usual with standard being three years like when wizards came out big announcement everybody guys standard is going to be for three years and everyone goes what does that mean wizards go what do you mean what does that mean it means it's it's longer now everything stays the same we're still gonna have a dumpster fire we're still gonna make insane garbage and then they started saying the one one of the things that was hilarious was like okay so back in the day we had block design and we really got to flesh out mechanics but we can't do that anymore now what we can do is like let's say there's a cool mechanic in the first year well then when we get to the third year we can like bring it on back like you're gonna do that and like you couldn't what what are you talking about it's just Silly, no, that was the best thing they could come up with. Where it's like, maybe like a mechanic that you guys like might come back. They literally have no idea. Why would you agree to talk about something when you have no idea? It's because they don't care, right? Look at the lore stream they did. They, they Everybody's yelling them about the, the Pinkerton stuff and they had to change the aftermath stream because everything got leaked. So they're like, we're gonna do a lore stream. They brought on two people who know the lore, who are in charge of the lore. They didn't know the lore. They couldn't answer any question. 
Unless your question was, hey, can you please say, uh, for me? You weren't getting a satisfactory answer, right? So we've got this insane product where Wizards is absolutely, absolutely not going to make their money on this one, right? Like this is, this is a dog of a product. The price point, the design of it, this offers nothing really it's garbage so worst product of 2023 for now something else will probably come out later down the pike that's even worse but that's all i have to say at this moment if you want to hear a lot more heated language and some fun cursing then come on over to my other youtube channel hatcher where i will be lighting this thing on fire with words all right not physically because i'm going to return it to the store so you can sell the one single in there that somebody's looking for and enjoy having 15 copies of every uncommon in there it's like it's like a worse fallen empire they charge eight times as much for <laughs> Okay, anyways, big shout out to my patrons. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I'll see y'all over in the live stream.